The Shadow. These half-hour dramatizations are designed to forcibly demonstrate to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids those in distress and helps the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the unseen voice belongs. The only one who knows the true identity of that master of other people's minds, the shadow. Today's story, Hypnotic Death. Herbert, why did you bring me to this doctor's office? I want you to meet the famous Dr. Dharma. He's a friend of mine. We might even get him to be my best man. Oh, Herbert, it makes me so happy to hear you making plans for our wedding. Martha, dear, you stay here a minute. I want to prepare Dr. Dahmer for the big surprise. Yes, Herbert. Uh, Hiya, fellas. Well, look who's here. Charming Charlie himself. Cut that, Fats. The name's Herbert Van Bursten for the present. Uh Uh-oh. You got something in town, huh, Charlie? Uh, I mean... uh, Yeah, yeah. Where's the doctor? Uh, He's inside with one of the lawyers. He'll be right out. What do you got, Herbert? A servant girl. No living relations. Yeah, pretty. Made to order. What kind of a policy she got? 10,000 life, double indemnity. All right. <laughs> you sure know how to pick her. You don't do so bad yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's the doc now. Hello, Dr. Dahmer. Well, Herbert, we've been waiting for you. You know Lawyer Munson? Yeah. Where's the girl? In the waiting room. Good. Have you her policy? Yeah, right here. There you are. Look it over, Munson. See that everything is in order. Sure, let me have it. Uh... Usual form. No inserts. Double indemnity for death. Beneficiary, Herbert Van Bursten. That's made out to you, all right. You bet. That's okay. Very well. Bring the girl in. Okay, Doctor. See that the boys have their instructions, Munson. Right, Doctor. Come right in, Martha. Yes, Herbert. These men are friends of mine, and this is the great Dr. Dahmer. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. I have it for ten. Come here, Martha. Close to me. Uh, Yes, sir. Look at me. Look into my eyes. Herbert. Look into my eyes, Martha. Oh, Herbert. Uh, Take me out of here. I... Martha. I am afraid. I don't... Run. Look into your... Now, Martha. From this moment on, I will control your mind. My will shall be your will. My instructions, your commands. Whether or not I'm with you, whether or not you see me, you will obey my orders. Obey your orders? Yes. Obey my orders. All right, men, you must be going. You are about to witness an even greater demonstration of my principle of telepathic hypnosis. The car with Herbert and the girls just pulling over to the curb, Dr. Dahmer. Where are the boys? I see they're standing on the corner. Herbert's getting out of the car. Very well. Stop the car. Oh, this far away, Doctor? The distance in no way affects my powers. I must close my eyes and concentrate. Keep me informed of the results, Manson. Right. Say, a girl stepped out of the car. Yes. Now to test my theory of telepathic hypnosis. Martha. Martha. Move close to the curb. She's doing it, Doctor. She's there. Stop, Martha. Wait for my orders. She's standing at the curb. Is there a car coming, Munson? Yes, there's one coming down the street at a fast clip. How far from the girl? How about 200 feet? Yes. 150 now? Yes. 100? Uh huh. 50? And now, Martha. 25. Walk, Martha. Walk. 10. She's. <laughs> Well, 
That's done, Dr. Dahmer. Yes, it is quite done, Munson. Quite. Oh, look, look, she's dead. Yeah. Dead? You murderer. You kill my fiance. I didn't mean to do you it. Kill me, you right there, you papers. Stand back. Now, buddy. What happened? Well, the girl stepped right in front of my car, officer. I couldn't stop. Yeah, of course you couldn't. You were going too fast. All right, all right, all right. We can't argue that out here. I'll have to place you under arrest, young fellow. Uh, just a moment, officer. What do you want? I saw what happened. That young man is not to blame. Why? The oh, girl he... walked right in front of the car. Well, you'd better let me have your name. Cranston. Lamont Cranston. Say, officer, this man's talking through his hat. This woman was killed by a reckless driver. Officer, yeah. there's something very peculiar about this whole thing. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, excuse me, officer. I'm Dr. Dharma. Wait, what is it? You are witness to this? No, this... I am not. I didn't see it. But as a citizen, I feel that reckless driving must come to an end. You say you didn't see what happened? That is correct. Then you'll pardon me, but I hardly think you're in a position to voice an opinion in this matter, Dr. Dahmer. I see. You, of course, are a witness for the driver. Exactly. Very noble of you. Very. I assure you, sir, that you and I will meet again. Yes, I'm sure we will meet again. <laughs> Lamont, you've hardly touched your dinner. Are you ill? The strangest feeling's been creeping upon me since that automobile accident. Oh. Lamont, your voice sounds awfully strange. Yes, I... I must shake this off. I, I must... Perhaps some more coffee would help, Lamont. That... Lamont, why are you staring so? You... That guy... Will meet... Again. What are you saying? Yes. I'm sure we will meet. You dropped the cup. What is the matter? We. Yeah. Wait, wait, there's somebody here. Oh, I don't it? know. He just simply toppled over. Some terrible thing has come over him. Now, Miss Lane, try and calm yourself. Notice how long will I have to wait for some news about Mr. Cran, Dr. Mm-hmm. Anthony, and Dr. Whitman are with him now. You must be patient. I don't understand it. He was so well only yesterday, and now I just can't believe it. Oh, here's Dr. Anthony now. Dr. Anthony, how is he? Oh, just a moment, Miss Lane. Nurse, will you stay with Mr. Cranston? Yes, of course, sir. Sit down, Miss Lane. I want to talk to you. But, Doctor, how is he? No better. What? If anything, he's worse. That may be brutal, Miss Lane, but you should know the facts. Oh, Doctor, it sounds frightful. I've called in every specialist I thought might help. we are completely stumped, Miss Lane. Never in our experience have we encountered such a strange case. Well, what can it be? We don't know. All the vital organs are in excellent condition. Yet his energy is rapidly ebbing. Oh. I hate to have to tell you this, Miss Lane, but... We're afraid Mr. Cranston won't last the night. Oh, no. Oh, no, that can't be possible. The most discouraging thing is Mr. Cranston's complete lack of cooperation. He seems to have lost the desire to live. Oh, I must go to him. He must fight this thing off, whatever it is. Come along, Mr. Lane. We put him in this room right across the hall. There we are. Now, Miss Lane, try to arouse his interest in something. Yes, Doctor, I will. Step right in. Lamont. Oh, Lamont. Margot. How are you, Lamont? Are you any better? Something. Bessie. Where? Here. My head. Oh. Hands. Squeezing. Lamont, listen to me, please. Your life is in your own hands. You must fight, Lamont. Fight. Here. Fight. Obey. Honor. My will. Your will. What do you mean? What are you trying to tell us, Lamont? Uh, can't tell you. He won't let me. What's that? Who won't let you? Uh, can't tell you. You uh, must tell us. What? Obey orders. Lamont, you've got to tell us. We want to help you. Tired. Sleepy. Doctor. Doctor, would you step over here a moment? Well, of course, Mr. Doctor... Don't think I'm mad that the man in that bed is not Lamont Cranston. Not the... Miss Lane. The body is Lamont Cranston, all right, but the spirit is not here. Well, that doesn't make sense. Let me explain. Isn't it true that when a person suffers from a uh, psychosis, 
they mother of things and experiences of the past? Yes, yes, that's quite correct. Well, these things Mr. Cranston's been saying, I've never heard him say before. No, but... Doctor, I'm convinced Mr. Cranston is uttering the words of someone else. Someone else? Yes, a, a will stronger than his own dominates him, dictates his every word and action. You mean a form of hypnosis? Have you ever heard of telepathic hypnosis? Well, of course. A book has been published on the subject just recently. In fact, I have a copy in my office. I feel only an authority on that subject can help Mr. Cranston. We must send for the author of that book. But, Miss Lane, the theories of hypnosis described in this particular book have not been endorsed by the medical profession. It makes interesting Dr. reading. Dr. Anthony, but... we don't know what's wrong with Mr. Cranston. Perhaps I'm clutching at a straw, but his life is in danger. I insist that you call him that author. Very well. Nurse. Yes, Doctor? Go into my office. I'll phone this man to come here at once. Here, I'll write the name for you. Dr. Augusta Dharma. <laughs> Yes, nurse, what is it? Dr. Dahmer's here. Oh, thank heavens. Uh, how do you do, Dr. Dahmer? I'm Dr. Anthony. A pleasure. Uh, this is Miss Lane, a friend of the patient. I'm honored, Miss Lane. Oh, it's good of you to come, Doctor. I hope you can help Mr. Cranston. I shall do everything in my power. I suppose you've come in contact with similar cases. Uh, frequently, Miss Lane. Is it possible, then, that Mr. Cranston's will is dominated by another? Quite possible. His very existence is in the hands of... Uh, well, uh, master mentality. Oh, doctor, please help him, please. Yes, uh, yes, of course, Miss Lane. I'll awaken the patient. No, doctor. I'll awaken him. Mr. Cranston. Yes? Open your eyes. Open. Eyes. He's awake. Why, doctor, that's an amazing demonstration. Lamont. Lamont, this is Dr. Dharma. He's come to help you. Obey. Obey. Don't you understand? Why do you stare like that, Lamont? Dr. Anthony, Dr. Dharma, that's the same expression he had on his face just before he collapsed in the restaurant. He seems frightened. Dr. Dharma, do you... Miss Lane, Dr. Anthony, I think it best that you leave me alone with the patient. Of course, Doctor. Well, it's a little cool in this room. Would you mind closing that window behind you? Uh, the Window? Window? Of course, I, I, I'll take care of it. Now, if you please. Certainly, Doctor. We'll leave at once. Come, Miss Lane. Dr. Dalma, I place my last hope in you. Uh, Mr. Cranston will be well taken care of. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> well, Cranston, we meet again, eh? We meet again. Oh, yes, of course. Your vocal cords. I <laughs> quite forgotten. You can think clearly enough, but can't express yourself. Well, I shall lessen the pressure a bit for the moment so that you and I can have a little tete-a-tete, -tete, eh? <laughs> you may talk, Cranston. You may talk. You murderer. You fiend. <laughs> Rather a spectacular beginning for a tete-a-tete. -tete. There may be a spectacular end to it, too, Dr. Dahmer. There's a limit to your control. The facts dispute you, Mr. Cranston. You are helpless. You can speak no louder or no longer than I choose to permit. You've grown rich by murder and fraud. But in some way, I'm going to put an end to you. Come now, Cranston. Your slight respite is over. I return you to the condition that baffles science and destroys you. My will is your will. My orders, your command. Obey. Obey. I will. Your will. Obey. Obey. Precisely. Now, Cranston, I leave you to your doom. You shall be dead by morning. <clears throat> second act begins. Is Mr. Cranston any better, Dr. Anthony? Sorry, Miss Lane. No improvement. Oh, this is terrible. It's horrible. Even Dr. Dahmer couldn't help. No, he said the patient refused to cooperate. Under the circumstances, help was impossible. I'm afraid Mr. Cranston lacked faith in Dr. Dahmer. If there was some way I could... Dr. Anthony... 
You have a copy of Dr. Dahmer's book. Yes. That might do it. If we show Mr. Cranston the book, he might realize how important Dr. Dahmer is. Well, we can try it. Uh, nurse. Yes, officer. Go across to my office. You'll find Dr. Dahmer's book on my desk. Bring it here. Please. Yes, officer. Dr. Anthony, the phone line is on. Oh, thank you, my nurse. Hello? Yes, sir. Asked to speak to Mr. Cranston. Well, that's impossible. You... Well, I see. All right, have him come up. I'll talk to him. What is it, Doctor? The driver of the car that killed the girl goes on trial tomorrow. His lawyer's downstairs in the reception room. He thinks Mr. Cranston can save the boy. Well, perhaps the plight of the boy might stimulate Mr. Cranston's interest. Why, yes, there is that possibility. Here's the book, Doctor. Let me have it. Yes, Miss Lane. Look, Lamont. This is Dr. Dahmer's book. You see his name on the cover. He's a tremendously important man, Lamont. You must let him help you. Miss Lane, I believe we've stuck something. He's coming through the pages. I think we've aroused his interest. Oh, that's the lawyer. You must put him off, Doctor. Yes, nurse, tell the gentleman we can't see him just yet. Uh, yes, Doctor. Look, Doctor. He's actually reading the book. This is the first break in the case. Oh, I hope so. Uh, Dr. Anthony. Yes, nurse, what is it? All that lawyer wants is for Mr. Cranston to establish how far the automobile was from the girl when she stepped off the curb. He brought this enlarged photograph of the scene of the accident in the hope that Mr. Cranston could mark the spot on the picture. Well, I'm afraid that would hurt you. Doctor, look. Mr. Cranston's reaching out for the photograph. I believe... Do you think he recognizes it? Apparently. Apparently. Nurse, let me have that photo. Yes, Miss Lane. Here, Lamont. Show us where the automobile was when the girl stepped off the curb. Why, he's drawing his finger over the picture. No. No, Lamont, not there. The place where the car was. Now, oh, he's indicating a spot on the sidewalk. You see, it's useless. His brain isn't functioning. Oh, look. Look, Miss Lane, he's... He's pointing from Dharma's name on the book cover to the spot on the photograph. Doctor! Doctor, I see it now. What? He's placing Dharma at the scene of the accident. Oh, Doctor, don't you understand? Lamont has met that man before. That's why he was so agitated when Dharma came in here. Why, I believe you're right, Miss Lane. That's why he keeps repeating the words, We will meet again. Do you think Dharma might be the influence that dominates Mr. Cranston? I don't know, Doctor. Uh, Look, Miss Lane. He's pointing to a passage in Dharma's book now. What is it, Lamont? Read the passage, Miss Lane. Should the controlling mind lose poise for even an instant, in that moment the spell is broken and the will of the subject released. If the controlling mind loses poise... Window. 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 Oh, he's trying to tell something by association of ideas. What significance can the window have? I've got it, Doctor. What? Do you remember when you asked Dharma to close that window? Yes. He lost his poise. He never went near it. He didn't dare look out of this 26th floor window. Of course. I thought his conduct strange at the time. Dharma is a victim of a phobia. The fear of high places. That is what Mr. Cranston is trying to bring up. We shall meet again. Doctor, we've got to get Dharma back up here. We've got to make him lose his self-control if only for an instant. It's the only way to break Dharma's influence. But will he come? He's washed his hands of the case. I think I know a way to get him here. Get the chairs out there on the terrace, nurse. Yes, Miss Lane. Dr. Anthony, I think we'd better move Mr. Cranston's bed a little closer to the edge. Yes, hurry, Miss Lane. Dharma's already on his way out. Where do you want this chair, Miss Lane? Right over there, close to the parapet. How did you manage to get Dharma to come up here? Well, I simply phoned and told him Mr. Cranston was getting well. He nearly dropped the phone. He was so nervous. Oh, right. oh, that must be Dharma. Yes. Now, look, I'll, I'll go through the next room and leave you and Mr. Cranston alone with yes. Nurse, you show Dr. Dharma in, and you can go. Thank you, Doctor. Good luck, Miss Lane. I certainly hope this works. Oh, I hope so, Doctor. Hurry, hurry. Lamont, watch him. Watch Dharma every second. This is our only chance to beat him. Uh, oh, Dr. Dharma, I'm glad to see you. How do you do? I too am glad. Isn't this rather unwise, having having Mr. Cranston out here? It's it's quite windy at this house. Mr. Cranston requested it. Requested it? Mr. Cranston did. Yes, won't you sit down, Doctor? Uh, here's a chair, right over here. Yes, I... Well, pardon me, Miss Lynn, but, but I'm pressed for time. I must examine Mr. Cranston alone, do you mind? Not at all, Doctor. I'll lead... Oh, oh. Uh, Miss Lane, look out. Why, tripped? how awkward. You, you nearly fell over the edge. Oh, did I frighten you, Doctor? Oh, come away from oh, there. I'm sorry. I'll leave you now with your case. Uh, yes, I... Miss Lane, look. Mr. Cranston's gone. <laughs> what was that? 
should the controlling mind lose poise for even an instant? <laughs> Thanks for the tip, Doctor. Miss Lane's fate stumbled at the trick. You lost poise. Who are you? Your liberated subject, Lamont Cranston. I can't see you. Quite right, Doctor. Nobody ever sees the shadow. The shadow? You? Yes, Doctor. I've heard of you. The Invisible. But this can't be. You accomplish this through hypnotism. Correct, Doctor. We're masters of the same art. We apply it quite differently. You have hypnotized me. All my life I've looked forward to an encounter with a shadow. I felt it would be the ultimate test of my hypnotic powers. Well, here we are, Doctor. Quite so. And you shall see who is master. What do you mean? I lost control over your will. But only for the moment. You're a fool if you think you can best me. I have just to touch you, and you will again be helpless. If you can touch me. You have made one mistake, a fatal one. Mistake? Your selection of an arena was thoughtless. This terrace is small. You'll have to pass me to get away. I warn you, Dama. This may mean your doom. I know where you are now. There. I'll... Oh! <laughs> You've lost the first move. You can't touch me, Dharma. It's useless to try. Your wisest course is to surrender and settle with the law. Never. Ha! Ah. You moved that chair. You're in the corner near the wicker fence. Now we'll see no, whether you can... Get me from the edge. <laughs> Right. Yes, Margot. I heard it scream. It was Dharma. Lost his balance. Oh. Fell 26 stories. Oh, Lamont. Well, thank God you're safe. Oh, it was so ghastly, you lying there, aware of everything, not able to express your thoughts. You expressed them very well for me, Margot. If it were not for you, this would be my hour of doom instead of Dharma's. He had an amazing mind, Margot. But like so many brilliant minds, it was bent in the wrong direction. Men like Dharma would be a boon to mankind if they used their talents constructively. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The Shadow Magazine is now on sale at your local newsstand. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>